probable depression, which is around 2%, 2 percent, 2 point something percent. And this was back in 2009, 10 years before. It has gone up five times to 11.2 percent by the end of November 2019. PTSD, it has definitely gone up to about 12.8 percent by the end of November 2019. So this is definitely abnormal. Overall, roughly about one in five Hong Kong adults suffer from either depression or PTSD, according to our study. How much do you believe the protests are related, the protests are the cause of the probable depression with PTSD? If you ask me, is it 100% definite? No, I can't guarantee that but I can't think of any other reason. I cannot, as a doctor and as a scientist, think of any other explanation which would be so synchronous, that is, it shows the timing matches so perfectly, and it affects everybody in society similarly, other than the social unrest. So I'm pretty sure that this is what has caused the psychiatric mobility that we have measured. Regardless of your political belief, whether you support or you are in opposition to the movement, regardless of whether you are young or old, regardless of whether you are rich or poor, everybody suffers similarly. We ask them, would you go and seek professional counselling or advice or care? Less than half told us they would. In some cases, we detected suicidal ideation. That is, they are thinking about harming themselves, putting an end to their own lives. What I really, really worry about is that we do not have the capacity in the healthcare or social care system to deal with this huge mental health burden. Hong Kong has got a shortage of these professionals, even during peacetime.